Hi, I'm Aditya Thakur and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a very special guest Ashwin Gopinathan answering our questions about what it is like working as a full-time Flutter developer. Ashwin is a wonderful human being. I actually met him at the Flutter India conference and this interview was recorded some time back. He is very calm and has extensive app development experience. He currently works as Zest Money as SD1 Mobile. Zest Money is a growing consumer lending fintech startup and they have raised millions of dollars. They are ever evolving. Without any further delay, let's get to the interview. So my name is Ashwin Gobinathan. Uh, I'm a software engineer working at Zest Money. So I'm a Flutter developer since almost 2019 when Flutter was pretty new. So before that, I used to like work with native Android. Then once I came across Flutter, I haven't looked back. And since then, I've been working with Flutter. So that's actually just about myself. Like we'll get to know more about like once we progress this. So uh, Ashwin is one of the best folks I know from the community and we have like connected over the, I guess, past two years. Uh, the first okay. time I think that we met was uh, for a uh, girl script summer of code Summer's and like we contributed yeah. there. Yes, yes. So um, I, I want to like get started um, uh, a little back as in like mm -hmm. when you're working with native development, what was the motivation to like switch to Flutter or why did you get started with Flutter in the first place? Well, actually, when I was in college, uh, it was like, I mean, the native Android development was basically based on Java and XML at that time. So it was pretty uh, tiresome for me to actually build application. And as a college student, I always look for shortcuts. And that's the main reason when I came to Flutter, I wanted to try something new. So I just started Flutter and I really loved how fastly you can actually de develop applications compared to native. So that was one of my main motivation to move to Flutter. But staying in Flutter was actually my choice because I love the community that provides and contributes to it. And I really love, like, if you have any questions any, anywhere in the, down the lane, so you can actually re reach out to someone and there'll be most probably people who can actually help you out with that instantly. So that was one of my main reasons to follow Flutter and I'm still doing that. <laughs> yeah, I think community is one big like superpower here with Flutter, especially like you can reach out to anyone um, within uh, on Twitter and you know you can connect with those people, ask them questions. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, like, how did you then you know after you decided like okay Flutter, um, but how did you uh, start? Like, did you go with a course or what? Was it more like hands on or like did you take up a workshop? So back then there weren't much courses online. I remember following Pawan Kumar's videos because mm. his videos are one of the top videos that I could find on YouTube. And I have to say, I started with his videos. Then what I did was like, I started building a project out of that. So rather than learning everything on a go, I, I followed an approach where we learn something new and implement that on an application, then learn something new again. So that was some more of an approach that I followed for learning further and getting further with Flutter. I think that that is a very interesting approach and I think the only suitable one right now <laughs> yes, you have to get hands on with it. Um, yeah. So um, like what was some like when you were working with Flutter then you had to you know move into actually developing for some companies and mm -hmm. you know taking up work. So what were like some of the first roles that you took up? How did they pan out? And you know. So one role, I mean, um, when I was learning Flutter, I wanted to implement something like, I mean, implement as in not like a personal project. I wanted to work with the organization that worked with Flutter. So what I did back then was like, I went to internshala.com and I searched for Flutter roles. Back then there were only few Flutter roles available as per my preferences. So I happened to get a role back in 2019 uh, towards uh, December. So that was my very first project. Uh, on which actually I got to learn a lot of new things apart from what I learned before doing my courses or learning my own. So that was one thing that I that really set I mean set my path into Flutter development. All right. So yeah. like was the opportunity just say like the was the opportunity under some mentors or what was it like more of you taking the lead on that? Uh, so it was basically under a mentor mm -hmm. because I was a pretty much uh, new to the uh, to the Flutter development. So they actually assigned me a currently undergoing project for their organization. And it was not, I didn't get a chance to implement a lot of things in that, just a few screens and few functionalities. And I remember that was the time when I first integrated Google Maps into Flutter. And that's how I came across that. 
and yep that's and, you know that yeah, yeah. Uh, i think google maps is still very difficult to indicate <laughs> yeah. i did once <laughs> yeah so um, how um, well uh, for anyone trying to apply to some of these roles and you know uh, they are in the period of learning and they are transitioning mm-hmm. into getting an internship what are some of the tips that now, now that you look back would you recommend to them so the first tip that, that i would suggest everyone is not don't wait until you become a good at flutter learn flutter implement something and apparently apply for the organization or internship that you find online it doesn't matter if you get rejected but even even if you get rejected it's a learning opportunity for you you're going to le- you're going to learn across i mean you're going to learn what all new questions are going to be asked in interviews and during that interviews you can actually get an idea about what is something that you need to work on I and mean, if it, if it's the basics you need to work on or you need to work on the actual dart concepts so that is one thing i'll suggest to everyone like don't wait until you get ready for that keep on applying and learn parallelly and also do build some applications in flutter so that you can actually show something to the users out i mean to the interviewers out there and one thing that i have always noticed is people add to their resumes the projects that they build using the courses they are learning So let's say there's a course online where they talk about building a weather a- weather application using the weather API. You don't have to copy the same thing or you don't have to build something similar. Use the same concept and build something different after that uh, on top of that and add them to the resume. Because most of the interviewers actually know what these applications and which courses they belong to. Yeah, so I think better, yeah. Yeah, like I think that personal touch really makes a difference because it shows like okay, you know how to do what you have done in the app so yes. far. So yeah, really important with that. Uh, so also, what are your thoughts on like being like, the first question that I get whenever I talk to someone you know new to internships and stuff? Like, should they go for a paid one? Should they take up an unpaid for experience? Like, what are your thoughts? Always go for paid ones because uh, someone once told, if you're good at something, don't do it for yeah. free. <laughs> so always go for paid ones even if it's a small amount it's going to motivate you to learn further and earn more that's one of the reasons actually I stayed in Twitter because I got to learn a lot of things and I used to monetize that learning somewhere so that is something I suggest always go for paid ones yeah i do agree with that like we are, we've been also trying to set a bar on the roles that we post so all of them have to mm-hmm. be like paid um True. so like talking about uh, you know from that from those roles to now moving mm-hmm. into hd like what was your experience and um, also if you could really quick mention about the company you know this money and yeah so let me start with this money so this money actually uses flutter for their main application so we uh, build ios and android apps on top of that and that was one of the main reason i applied for this because i wanted to uh, showcase my skill in flutter and build something for the society Uh, I mean, as a mobile application developer, the main rights that you have is the bragging rights. Like whenever someone is using an application, you have the right to tell them that that's the feature you build, and you can literally show the people that that's how you implement it. So that is one of the main reason I applied for Zest, and I got into that. So. What was the other question? I really uh, forgot. Like moving there, like what was your journey? You know, uh, growing yourself in that you know space. Yeah. So um during my college time like after I did one or two internships as a fresher I got a chance it was actually for a startup that one of my friend co-founded so I got a chance to be a team lead for that organization and being a team lead I got a chance to work on a couple of applications for their clients and that is something that was a different uh, experience for me because earlier I used to work as a fresher and working on features that the organization had to implement but now working as a team lead i got a chance to actually implement something from scratch to take it to production so that was a different uh, experience and journey for me that actually set pace for my uh, role in zest money because that was one thing that the interviews like that i had experience as a team lead for a small organization that actually paved my i mean paved my way to an actual product developer okay. so i would yeah so that is something i would like to suggest everyone is like you don't uh, i mean if you're learning flutter don't just learn flutter learn how you can engage users a lot, a lot i mean engage more users into it build learn about ui ux about it and learn about how you can take your applications to production so that is something that i regret that i didn't do before joining zest and that's something i'm learning at zest for me 
yeah i think makes sense also like flutter is a ui framework so you need to know yeah. how to make those good ui yeah so uh how like how was that um, the interview process like what does zest look for in a flutter developer and you know how would how that go if you are open to sharing that so uh, the interview process were normally similar like how other interviews i mean other companies take up i usually i had a uh, i mean coding round where on hacker rank and after that i had a round on dsa like they asked a pretty basic questions on dsa but they wanted to test whether you are good at problem solving and what if they have given you a question are you able to solve that so that was the uh, first initial rounds then after that i had flutter rounds and my flutter round was taken actually by Fr- vivek yadav one yeah. of the gds in flutter and that yeah. the moment i got the mail and the name was the vivek yadav i was like kya padha like what should i learn yeah. so that i can actually clear the interview so i had i had to go through a lot of resources online but once the interview started he asked, started asking questions that are basics so that was something that i thought ki what did i study and what is he asking about then later i got to know that he wanted to test whether my basics were correct mm-hmm. the basics are, st- are strengthened enough to actually join a flutter organization yeah, so I that guess. is something yeah so that is something i would like to suggest to everyone make sure your basics are very clear like just build just use the counter app that you get for flutter and go through each and every item that is actually implemented in the template code for example if you are using build context learn more about build context what it does and what's the actual use in that particular application so that is something i would suggest to everyone yeah i think valid questions as in uh, you know the basics should be clear even if you're working on a big project yeah. um like talking about um, basics itself like there is this one question that is everywhere like with the state management since you mentioned build <laughs> context i'll ask you that what is your, your like go to state management library i would say like well my my answer would be it depends mm-hmm. so i have actually worked with provider block and riverport but that was actually like it depends on the application that you are building if you want a production scale application i would say go with block because it has a lot of features in it but still i won't support i'm not endorsing block as mm-hmm. the best state management tool but still it depends on the use case uh, i used to use provider before because it actually made sense to me while i was working with it so as per the uh, use case that I had that i had in my hand so provider was a right choice at that time then i learned block then i had to use block from some other applications and i do explore riverport and every, every other state management that i could yeah i think uh, a lot of companies also like they have internally different statements like i recently read zerodha has, has their own internal tool built to yeah, correct. yeah so um does this many do that or like do they are they dependent on well actually we use block for mm-hmm. most of the purpose but uh, currently block serves most of the work that we need yeah. so, so in the future like if we think that block could could not go with i mean could not achieve the thing that we wanted to do we can actually go for any other state management that's completely dependent on our like use case in hand makes sense um how was the transition you know like when you're building projects they are small scale very like mm. almost zero users except your family and then moving into a big code base so how did you go through that manage that um well um that's pretty tricky because like um yeah i did spend a lot of time understanding the code base when it, i mean the production level code base it's completely different like from how much i mean how we write code because when we write code it usually ends up being boilerplate and uh, that is something that i learned like we need to uh, follow proper design patterns architecture patterns when it comes to production scale application so having a basic idea about um basic design patterns or basic architecture has actually plays a major role when you move or transition from a small code base to an actual production level code base yeah i so, think yeah. that is important um also uh, another question around this i would yeah. say like uh, when you're working with on a bigger code base uh, mm-hmm. what other skills do you think like other than flutter you know do you yeah. need some Uh, i think version control would be one but like do you have to learn docker and you know do all that stuff or? um well we don't need to know about docker i mean as uh, as far as i worked currently i have never used docker for flutter applications right now but if you're talking about other tech stacks that you need mm-hmm. to know one thing that i would suggest is learning about native development because 
you do, uh, at the end of the day, you don't have to be a front-end developer. You need to be a mobile application developer. But that, that's a big difference between front-end developer and mobile application developer. In the sense that a mobile application developer should know not only Flutter, but actually native, the native implementation of the same. Because at some point in your life, you're going to actually implement native code. Because they, that could be something that Flutter doesn't support right now. So you may have to build plugins on top of native, maybe using Kotlin or Swift for the different platforms. So that is something that I would suggest to everyone, like learn native development. Don't have to learn parallelly. Learn Flutter. Once you reach a point where you're satisfied with your learnings in Flutter, learn native Android or native iOS. Well, depending on the use case and your capability. But I would suggest do learn native development, either Android or iOS. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of the things that have come into Flutter are, are like inspired from, you know, native development yes. in, some, yeah. in some ways. So uh, it is important, like a lot of people try to mm. skip that out. Okay, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, it gets important. Even, I, even I skipped while mm. I was learning Flutter and I recently started learning native. When, because I realized like, and during one of your uh, uh, Discord channel sessions mm. with Pooja Bhavmik, she also mentioned that learning. learning native is actually good. And that's my turning point when I started actually learning native. Yeah. So it was like after 1.5 years of learning Flutter, mm. I actually skipped to, I mean, I started learning native Android. Yeah, so, I, I think yeah. I'm on the same path, you know, because I, I started out with Flutter, it, everything has been good with Flutter, but like, mm -hmm. I, I now feel like, okay, I should know some part of native. True. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's going to take you a long way if you have some native Android, native Android or native iOS background. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. I think we agree on that. But <laughs> uh, so like, what do you think should be a roadmap, you know, for anyone headed this way? Because a lot of questions that I get also mm -hmm. are like, okay, I'm in college. Should I stick with mm -hmm. Flutter? Should I, you know, change into like getting a mm -hmm. software engineer, like the other one or the other role? So okay so um to those people who are actually confused whether flutter whether you should continue flutter i would just ask like you just have need to ask yourself like whether you want to be a mobile application developer or not like if your answer is yes you want to be a mobile application developer i would suggest you learn flutter learn native android native android and native ios i mean native implementation mm -hmm. so that way you don't you're not restricted to flutter alone you also have some knowledge about native so which actually will help you transi transition to a mobile application role rather than restricting you to a Flutter developer. Yeah. Let's say in the future, you are planning to move to an organization or a big MNC that actually uses native Android or native iOS. So in that case, you're not going to be, uh, I mean, you're not going to stand, you're not going to be left out because you just knew Flutter. You also have some experience with native development. So I would suggest uh, that is something that you need to ask yourself whether you need to be a mobile application developer or not. Yeah, I think I do agree with that. Like if you have to stick with this domain, then you know, you can expand in it. There are a lot of opportunities right now. Like this is just a personal thought, but I see like a lot of roles come up within mobile applications. Yes, correct. Yeah. Absolutely. There are, I mean, if you go to LinkedIn jobs and type Flutter, I can see around 2000, 3000 results are there already. Yeah. So that means there are a lot of organizations that are actually migrating their code base to Flutter. Yeah. So also like, but, but, what are your thoughts on that? Like, is it good? Matlab, if you, if like a startup person mm -hmm. comes to you, I think you would recommend Flutter for MVP. Like, is that the case or? Uh, I would say this, but that actually depends on the use case as well. If their application doesn't have any big, big, I mean, for example, let's say they have their application supports AR or 3D rendering and everything. I wouldn't suggest I wouldn't suggest Flutter at that moment because Flutter currently, I mean, it's not up to mark as native implementations. But uh, if the application is like just other application that you find online, or if they have some custom things, I would suggest Flutter will be a good option if they want to ship their application at a faster pace. Yeah, I think that does make sense because if like native interaction is a lot, so you know, you mm -hmm. want that yeah. to be made natively. Okay. So, um, being in Bangalore, like, um, first of all, how's the weather? <laughs> there? <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, that's something that I tell everyone. Yanka weather is very good. So, mean, the ecosystem in Bangalore is really good. If you are a, if you want to be a developer, I'll just move to Bangalore. You're yeah. gonna, I mean, not only move to Bangalore, move to any city, but Bangalore can do 
that environment or exposure mm-hmm. that you get being with people who are like minded at something that's that's something that i wouldn't have got if i stayed in my native mm. so that's the main reason i moved on to bangalore and the exposure that i get here is unmatchable yeah i think that was also my question because you know i get a lot of people ki nahi even if you do not have a job move to bangalore you'll find a hd role mm-hmm. because Correct. there are a lot of people so uh, how are the like you also are a speaker you have spoken at a number mm-hmm. of events how are the community side of things like what inspired you to get into that or you know get started with this so one of my main motivation was something like uh, if i'm learning something i need to teach that to people so that they don't have to go through what all i went through because when i was learning from it they were much resources online i had to google search a lot i had to go through articles and videos and everything so that actually was not a good time for me because i had my college as well at that time and i had to balance between my college studies assignments tests and also learning flutter but now uh, what i want to do is like one i want to bring more and more people into flutter and make them i mean it's something like what a, if i learn something new i need to tell people like this a different approach to this or there's a new implementation a new package that you can use and that will actually make the life easier i don't want anyone to like go through in uh, i mean go through a lot of articles to actually understand something so that was my main reason like teach people what i learn every day yeah i think that that is one great motivation to have because uh, you know like when we are learning all this we are scrambling through all these articles and when we finally understand it i think you know being able to teach that to someone in those yeah. short is like was such a good initiate so and, and um, plus like uh, sorry sorry to break in like no, no, and no. plus and plus if you are uh, integrating the something i mean the same thing and you forget how it how its implementation was you can actually go back to your articles mm-hmm. or go back to your videos and understand how how you did it yeah i do that a lot like i have some <laughs> videos i go back. so yeah. uh like you are also part of the flutter canada you know the team like how is that like do you go to canada or no, no, no. Yeah. i mean people ask me a lot mm-hmm. like do i travel to canada or not but it's not like that so when they started off as a community i wanted to contribute something to their community so i reached out to them like asking if i could help in any way so a couple of events i took for them and i gave i mean i gave talks a couple of times with them and eventually they wanted someone from india to actually represent the organization so they asked me whether i could be an ambassador for product canada and i was really excited about that and i said yes to that so that was one of the main reason i became an ambassador not that i mean I, people everyone asked me like do i travel again or not so no i don't travel uh also uh, then what's next for you as in both with the app development journey or with the speaking journey like where do you see yourself going forward so uh in the future i'm planning to be i mean i mean i want to learn new new things that comes from flutter because flutter there are a lot of innovations happening in flutter and it's i mean it's not stopping anywhere i want to learn a lot of new things currently i am just building apps for flutter i'm mean, flutter app, mobile and web application i want to expand my knowledge into other platforms as well like desktop linux mac so that is something i'm planning to do in the future and i do want to apply to upcoming uh, upcoming events or anywhere like especially i applied for flutter global summit and i'm not sure if i'm going to get it but mm-hmm. i do want to apply for future any events that comes up and yeah that is my plan for the upcoming time we yeah, are really excited for you like i'll keep running into you at these events you know meet you there yeah. sometime in person uh Absolutely. also like i saw you take up the dart um, server side a lot so mm-hmm. like how like how excited are you with the changes that are happening with dart or you know new things that are coming up with it yeah so um, when i first started with dart as a back end so it was back in november 2021 mm-hmm. so at that time we didn't have much i mean we did have the server package from I and mean, the server shell package from the actual dart team and they did actually have some good development going on in their team but after a long, uh, almost a year down the lane now i'm seeing there are a lot of packages built on top of it. let's say dart frog or server pod i mean these are the applications that are bringing innovations to the concept of dart as a backend and i'm i'm really excited to explore that as well because um when people talk about dart they connect dart to flutter but in the future i would like to see a time when dart can also be used for backend for building backend applications building servers or something that normal backend languages does 
so that is something that i'm really excited about yeah i think dart is a very powerful language and you know we don't yeah. give it that much credit everyone like okay ni flutter ke liye like uh-huh. when you talk to people like i code in dart they don't understand it like when you say like okay i develop apps with flutter then they understand yeah. <laughs> 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 i'll be about what i'm talking <laughs> but initially like if you see the history of dart that was actually meant for browsers mm-hmm. i mean then later the google team especially the flutter team adopted dart for their development and that is how dart got associated with flutter yeah, okay i didn't know that the browser part but i did know like they the flutter team went out looking for a language for their framework correct. and dart was the most uh, optimized one mm, correct yeah, yeah. So I really thank you for taking our time today you know no, no problem it's a pleasure is mine yeah uh, it was like a really good interview i think a lot of insights for anyone looking to get into flutter mm-hmm. domain or mobile development and then you know growing there mm-hmm. uh, any like closing tips that you want to share something that helped you or something that you would want people to do um i would just say never stop learning there there could be a point in your life where you will feel like you have learned something flutter and you want to build keep on building it that is something that i did at that time so i just uh, build everything that i could find but but i never gave time to learn more after that so that is something i would say is make sure you're building something as well as learning as well this make sure you're doing it parallelly but i mean also when you're building an application that is one of the ways you can actually learn something new in flutter let's say you are building a login screen and you want an authentication service you go at you come across file base or some other authentication service and you're going to learn it in depth so then that, that's one way of learning but just i want to let you know like never stop learning and if at all you come across a point where you feel like you do, you have no idea what to learn or that you will feel like there are a lot of things in front of and where should you start with i would just say reach out to some amazing people on twitter and ask their advice like where should you go forward and start with one topic start with one topic build something then go to the other topic because you have lot of time in your hand there's no rat race going on it's more of a marathon make sure you're learning slowly implementing something and learn keep on learning that's something that i would suggest to everyone yeah true so uh thank you so much for uh, taking this time out and it, like thank you everyone for watching this video follow ashwin on twitter like you can reach out to him there follow him on github also like that would be a good place to check out some of the yeah. projects that have been done and yeah uh, with that i think uh, we'll end it here thank you so much thank you everyone